It's my privilege to be here. It's my privilege to do what I do because um, this really helps our nation's veterans. They left their homes and communities to be able to go and serve this country and keep us safe and protected. As they age, they want to stay in those same homes and communities and remain there. Um, and this is what we're doing to help them remain living in those communities. The new generation of veterans who are returning from um, conflicts overseas, they equally well would like to stay in their homes and communities. And many come from rural areas, so they'd like to remain working there. Our provision of health care taking place as close as possible as it can to the veteran is something that helps first and foremost, to keep them with those friends, families, and community. Telehealth, which I'm going to talk to you about this morning, essentially, just to give you the simple definition, is using information and telecommunication technologies to provide healthcare when the provider and the patient are separated by geographic distance. There are many definitions, and I won't spend a lot of time going into them, other than to say, I think Dr. Allude, Dr. Petzl alluded very well to the fact this will become just how healthcare is practiced. We don't talk about going to do e-banking when we go to an AD ATM. So a lot of what you'll hear about this morning is around the transitional steps. And VA is very much at the leading edge of where this is. I mentioned a moment or two ago that this is about how we provide care to the veteran and help he or her to live independently in their own communities. So I'd like to start right up front by showing you a video of a veteran from rural Colorado and just show what a difference telehealth services are making to him and his ability to stay connected to his own community. Veteran Bill Jacobs is enjoying retirement on his ranch in Craig, Colorado. We're very fortunate here. We live in a rural area. We have the wildlife all the way around us. It's a beautiful setting. We love it. It's, uh, it's our lifestyle. But the closest VA hospital is more than 150 miles away, and getting there over mountain roads can be a real challenge. It's about a three and a half to four and a half hour drive to Grand Junction. In the past, we, uh, we missed a lot of our appointments. We couldn't make it down because of the storms. But now, telehealth is helping vets like Bill get the care they need closer to home. Uh, my name is Bart Taylor. I'm a PA with the VA Medical Center in Grand Junction. One of our patients is Bill Jacobs. He used to not really receive much care at all until the Craig Telehealth did open. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? Doing fine, sir. How are you? Excellent. Doing, doing good. Physical exams will rely heavily on nursing at the remote site. The tools I have are a stethoscope, which is done over the web. Also, there are fiber optic otoscopes, and there is a high-definition uh, movable camera, which can be moved around to inspect skin lesions. Being examined on the, on the television screen is a little bit different than sitting in the office with that doctor. But on the other hand, he still is able to talk to you, to look at what your problems are, and you also are looking the other way at the doctor. I was surprised that uh, uh, you could provide this much level of care, and I think the veterans are actually more uh, satisfied with their care through telehealth. Yeah, our primary health care has, has definitely improved since the clinic came in and the people that are in there are well qualified people. They do a fantastic job. It's just an improvement for all of us veterans. The VA cannot continue to build large medical centers in every city. Uh, the answer to that is probably telehealth and that we can have a, a small clinic, a nurse or two, a computer link which would link to any doc or PA in America. This works very efficiently and very cost effectively. But it's just made our life so much easier out here. And it's utilized by veterans out of Utah, out of Wyoming, uh, and of course from this corner of, of Colorado here. I'm able to live here and actually drive 15 minutes and be into the health clinic to get the help that I need. So it's a godsend for us. You couldn't ask for any more. I have the better of two worlds. So I think that presentation you've just seen by Mr. Jacobs shows just how, what a difference this makes. What I'd like to do now is this is about people and relationships. I'd like to use the technology that we have here to take you to a clinic in South Mariana, which is in northern Florida, South Georgia healthcare system. And we can just talk to some um, telehealth um, staff and also see a patient who's there in the clinic. We're using the same kind of systems that we use to be able to deliver the care, so we'll be able to show you how we do that. 
So if we may do, could we just go down to the Mariana Clinic, if we may, please? So what I'd like to do is introduce you to Linda Henderson and to, to Barbara, and um, who are, Linda is the telehealth so Linda is the telehealth lead down there in Mariana, and Barbara is the telehealth clinical technician. And you have a patient there with us, don't you, this morning? Could you introduce us, if you will, please, um, Linda? Yes, sir, uh, Dr. Darkins. This is Thomas Perry. He is a veteran of ours here in the Mariana Clinic and has received primary care here and specialty care from uh, Gainesville, which is 210 miles from here. Good morning, sir. Thank you both for your service and being with us this morning. Good morning. May I ask you um, what difference it's made to your life being able to connect via telehealth to Gainesville? Well, uh, Gainesville is about a four hour drive. Uh, if your appointment's scheduled at eight o'clock in the morning and because we're in central time zone, you're leaving here about three o'clock uh, to get there in time. Uh, the also, it also uh, allows us to talk to specialists uh, about our problem uh, without having to endure that eight hours on the road. Uh, and it saves the VA travel money, in my case. Uh, I think the program works well. I've, on, I've only been involved in two of them. That's with a dietitian and with Dr. Cousy. Um, and I think the, my initial visit with Dr. Cousy went well. Uh, the, only, the only thing that uh, concerns me a little bit is that I think at least once a year we should be face to face uh, with our doctor so that he can see us, he can examine us. Uh, you know, some of those things can't be done over TV. But for uh, routine uh, things, I, I think it worked quite well. May I ask you what you first felt when somebody suggested to you you might have your care provided by um, at a distance via video? Uh, I was concerned about how it was going to go. Uh, I spoke with the staff here uh, in the Mariana CBOC, and uh, I was apprehensive because uh, I, I didn't know who I was facing. Uh, Dr. Cousy was new at the time, and uh, you know you, you get used to certain things, certain doctors, and uh, so I, I was I, I didn't really know much about it, but I was willing to try it. Well, thank you so much for doing so, Linda. Um, if I may do, um, you've set up these services sometimes at quite short notice, haven't you? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the Mariana Seabock opened uh, almost five years ago, and within two months we were doing telehealth visits. And most of the visits were, had to do with uh, diabetes education. But then gradually over time we've actually added endocrinology, infectious disease, cardiology, uh, and probably the biggest area that I think that's helped the vets the quickest is the PT and OT DME clinics. And so to me, uh, when we set up the PT clinics, we have a physical therapist out of Lake City, which is 167 miles from here. Uh, he, uh, we bring the vets here into the clinic and he, he and I together, or, or the TCT together, uh, we assess the patient, figure out what they need as far as DME. Now what has happened even, which is even better, is sometimes vets that come into the clinic to see their primary care doctor, or primary care says, you know, he really needs a quad cane or we really need to go ahead and get him a rollator. And I'll call up Dave on his landline and say, hey, Dave, do you have the ability to dial into Mariana now to assess this patient, which he has done on many occasions. We've also used the dietitians that way out of Lake City and Gainesville. If they have the ability right then to stop and dial in to our CVT unit here, they have done that and seen the patient at the same time the patient's been in for their primary care visit. And it's been absolutely wonderful. I can tell you it's, it truly has been a lifesaver for, for, for many veterans. Thank you so much. And if I'm right, we've got a clinician with us this morning. Um, who have you managed to um, connect us with this morning? Uh, Rock Bassiano and Warren Seabock. Uh, May I ask from your perspective um, how you're finding the use of telehealth? Uh, it, it's, 
It's been a wonderful resource for us. Um, it gives us uh, instant access to uh, specialty cares and um, the convenience to the patients has been absolutely fantastic. Um, so it, it's, it's been a wonderful addition. Well, thank you for that. What I'd like to do, since I think we have a few moments, if anybody in the audience would like to ask some questions, it gives you opportunity to speak real time to people who are doing this. Um, so if we may do, what we'll do is we'll pass the microphone around. You may not see the person directly, you'll hear the voice, but we'll ask the audience to ask questions if you'd be kind enough to take them. Any questions anyone would like to ask of our, our team down in South Georgia, North Florida? Does anybody um, on the video connection have experience with uh, like mobile apps on iPads? You mentioned before that um, they were issued out. Uh, this, this is Linda and Mariana. I, I can't tell you that we've had uh, experience with that. However, there are some, it's probably considered older technology, but uh, we actually have sent to veterans' homes, they're, they're little Tanbergs, and I can't tell you the, the number on them, but we've actually, uh, the vet comes into us in Mariana, we teach them how to use it, they go home, and as long as they have a modem, they connect the modem you know, to the little Tanberg, and then the physical therapist out of Lake City calls the veteran into his, uh, in the home three times a week, and they actually do physical therapy in the home with the veteran using that Tanberg. We're also at the, at the same time we're issuing out little uh, little I think called, they're called jabber cameras that will go on top of the veterans monitor at home, and we're going to start doing uh, home visits, mental health consultation or mental health uh, counseling in the homes using that type of technology, uh, and of course that involves some software that, that our TCTs like Barbara here actually goes out into the home and sets that up and teaches the veterans how to use it. Well, thank you all for taking time out of your day. May I just ask if there are any last comments before we, um, we leave you that you'd like just to make to share with the audience? Um, would any of you like to go back into the days when there wasn't telehealth? In other words, do you think there's been a significant improvement in the way that care has been delivered? If I may go around you all, if please. I, I feel it's working fine, except for my one reservation about seeing the doctor face to face once a year. Uh, so we have a personal interaction uh, rather than a telephone interaction. But I, I'm comfortable with it. Uh, I'm comfortable with the doctor. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to save the VA money that they can put into other places to help more veterans. I definitely feel it's been a big improvement, especially for my congestive heart failure patients who were unable to make trips to Gainesville on a regular basis to see their cardiologist to monitor their congestive heart failure. They come into me and the cardiologist and I see them. I have a stethoscope where the cardiologist can listen to his heart and lungs and make a determination if his CHF is progressing and they need to make adjustments to medications without him having to drive the 240 miles to Gainesville. So it has been a great help to my congestive heart failures. They all love it. Thank you so much. Last two comments, if we may. Linda, any last comments? Well, I, uh, I'm a veteran myself, and so I haven't needed any of the services yet. However, when the time comes, I'm coming to Mariana to do telehealth. I'm not driving to Gainesville. So to me, <laughs> it's, an outstand, it's an outstanding thing for all veterans. So I, I love it. Last comment? OK. Well, thank you all so much. We'll let you go back to your day. Thank you for taking time out of your day to share with us. We very much appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for sharing that. This, I think, really shows why we're doing this. Um, there are clinics all over the country. So I'd like to take you around and just give you a, a, an idea of the breadth of telehealth and how the number of veterans are being affected by it and their lives changed. So if we go to the slides, please. If we may just swap to the slides. Wonderful, thank you so much. My apologies, I'm having some glitches. So what I'll do is 
I will just give you the same presentation um, without using the slides. So last year, VA provided care to 490,000 veterans um, using telehealth technologies. And that amounted to 1.4 million consultations that took place. And they predominantly take place in three different areas, three different um, platforms that we use. The first is what's called clinical video telehealth. And what that does is it really does what you saw in the, in the, um, in the video and in meeting the staff down in the Mariana Clinic. It uses video technology, which you can s you'll see demonstrated if you'd like after this, to be able to connect between the hospital and the clinic in exactly the same way as somebody might do to be able to see face to face but at a distance. This started off predominantly to be able to um, provide care for mental health conditions. And those mental health conditions um, is, excuse me just one second. I think in fact, let's, let's, I think that's better. Wonderful. My apologies. Let me quickly go back. So, the vision for telehealth in VHA, let me just say, patient-focused, as you've just seen, it's a way to actually take the care directly to the patient. Forward-looking, the various platforms we're using to deliver care via telehealth. These telehealth platforms are ones in which we're making sure we move forwards, and you'll hear in this presentation how we're moving forward to deliver care into the home. And the other thing I'm going to do is present you some of the outcomes. You heard from the, from the clinic some of those outcomes. I'm going to give you some data that just focuses on that. I met was starting to just say before that there are three main areas that we deliver care via telehealth. The first is the clinical video telehealth, which provides these real-time consultations. There are 44 areas of clinical care we provide them for. They range from tele-ICU, telemental health, telecardiology, teleneurology, as you can see in the list which is there. The second area we talk about is home telehealth. That uses a different technology framework. This provides care and case management of chronic conditions and helps veterans to live independently in their own homes. I'll be saying a little bit more of that at the moment. And the last is store and forward telehealth, which takes images and then sends them to be reviewed elsewhere by a clinician who then sends a report back, usually to the primary care physician who's ordered the, the test. Now, VA is recognized as a leader in the scope and scale of telehealth I mentioned that we do 1.4 million episodes of care, and it is to around about half a million veterans. And the care is from 150 VA medical centers and 650 CBOCs. 49% of these veterans live in rural areas, much as you saw um, in Colorado. And the services are growing by approximately 29% annually. The home telehealth programs 119,000 veterans got care via that way this year, and 42,000 of those were supported to live independently in their own homes for non-institutional care. As you're sitting here and I'm standing before you, there are just over 76,000 veterans who are able to live independently in their own homes by virtue of us having this technology. The video telehealth, 148,000 patients got care via this way last year. Over 6,600 clinical video conferences, conferencing systems are connected in a network across VA. The vision of this has been that any site should be able to link to any site. So a hypothetical veteran who might be in um, Iron Mountain in Michigan, in the Upper Peninsula, he or she should be able to link across to our MS Center of Excellence in Baltimore or to in Seattle or Portland as this evolves. So they could get specialist advice for their MS. So if you imagine this evolving, growing network, that's the vision of being able to provide care, which is really very unique in what it's able to do. There's an IP connection, internet, internet protocol, and it's a direct dial, so the clinicians can just link together very easily. We have coding systems, that means we have very good data about what takes place, and that gives us some outcomes information to be able to review what we're doing. Second area I need to just mention is the store and forward telehealth. 263,000 patients got care this way last year. The driver for all these programs are not the technology. The driver is the underlying need to provide care to patients, to veterans. With the number of veterans with diabetes, 
this program enables those veterans to end up getting eye care screening for diabetic eye disease and avoids possible blindness by virtue of instituting treatment and care. Also, the same store and forward technology um, is providing care for dermatology. Last year, we provided care to 27,000 veterans to get dermatology care, and that's a growth of 127% over two years. So rapidly growing programs delivering care into rural areas. Again, standardized coding, standardized information technology platform, standardized business processes that means that we get data that know that's how I can give you these figures. And the last area is the home telehealth, supported, as I said, 119,000 patients last year. This is really predicated on the fact that rather than going to an outpatient clinic appointment to be seen, where somebody may or may not have a problem, what we're able to do is to intervene if somebody has an, an exacerbation of their heart failure, their diabetes, their hypertension, their post-traumatic stress disorder, their depression, etc. So as I was saying, this is a way in which people can remain living independently in their own homes. It avoids people having to unnecessarily go into nursing homes and is absolutely keeping people in their own homes and local communities. Again, standardized business processes, standardized technology, standardized coding systems. Of huge importance, and you'll hear more about telemental health in a moment, is telemental health. This is something which has been a big driver. Patient need is what has driven all these programs. Since 2003, VA has done over 800,000 encounters for telemental health to be able to support veterans living in, um, uh, avoiding having to come into VA medical centers. These services have gone to 150, 146 VA medical centers and 531 CBOCs. So an 18-fold increase in these services over these last um, 10 years. The scope of these services are for all mental health conditions. And um, also, in addition to providing this via video, which I just described, home telehealth technologies are allowing 7,100 patients last year to be able to be managed and monitored using those devices in the home. Last year, 1,304 patients had video consultations directly into the home. And in a few moments, I'm going to show you a video that just ex exemplifies that care directly into the home. Outcomes. The um, effects of using telehealth have been to reduce the home telehealth, hospital bed days of care by 58%, hospital admissions by 38%, and reduces bed days of care by 56% for mental health. Patients are highly satisfied, as you heard. There's, no, um, there's always the option that veterans can use conventional means of healthcare delivery if they don't wish to use telehealth. There are many people who actually um, prefer telehealth, particularly given the reductions in travel and the convenience of getting care. 85% for home telehealth, 96% for um, store and forward, and 93% scores for clinical video telehealth. We're seeing travel reductions, which are causing cost avoidance, $34.45 per consultation for clinical video telehealth, $38.81 per consultation for store and forward, and the cost avoidance for the home telehealth programs, the figures from the, we've got are that that's just under $2,000 per annum per patient for all the costs. We've had in terms of taking this program forward to make sure we have national training resources. We train over 4,000 staff each year, and the majority of that training takes place virtually. The training materials are standardized with standardized content delivery and we have metrics to be able to, to show the competencies of all these staff each year to be able to satisfy joint commission requirements. So just I'd like to summarize at the end before we go to the last video, which we will in a second, and just say it's an enormous privilege, as I said at the beginning, to be associated with these programs. The kind of um, response you saw from the veteran in the video there, in the live video link, is what we're seeing. This is really making a change to, to veterans' lives. This is part of what is a much bigger um, entity of telehealth you'll hear at the moment. So it's really being transform transformational. But in being transformational, it's really important we have robust, sustainable platforms. These are not services which are ones where we're just doing these as pilots or projects. The size and scope of these are such they're main mainstream programs. And these are programs that are mission critical and are ongoing. 
And as I go around and talk elsewhere, and I know many of my colleagues do about what's happening in VA, um, this is really visionary in terms of what's happening elsewhere. As I close what I'm going to say, I ought to just attribute the fact that it's a privilege working in this organization. And what I've just described would not be possible without teams of people and other programs that have put the underpinnings in place to do this. So I'd like to close my piece of the proceedings by just going to a last video that shows what it is like to have telemental health services providing directly into the home and the kind of differences and the feelings of both clinician and patient for that. So this video, we're going to take you to um, New Jersey. And if we could have that video, we'll move into it now, please. So this is a VA psychologist so, um, who's talking to a VA to patient. Switch topics a little bit and ask you a little bit about the video to home uh, process that we do. Um, okay. Because uh, you and I used to meet when you would go to the clinic and we would, um, you know, use the this a similar camera system, but at your end it was a much bigger system than it is at home, of course. Um, and uh, the resolution was maybe a little bit clearer and stuff, but you had to go to the clinic. So, um, so how, well, how does this make a difference in your life, being able to do video at home? Uh, I, I don't have to go to the clinic anymore, obviously, it's the major thing. And I, I don't have to do that driving, and I'm, I'm more apt to make my appointments than to say, oh, I don't want to drive however long it was. If it's four Monmouth or Tinton Falls, I can just turn my computer on now and my appointment's here and there's really no no reason to miss my appointments. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to wait in a waiting room. Um, with other people? With other people, which I don't like sometimes. I mean, you're never late for this appointment. Mm -hmm. I just think it's more, um, what is the word? It's more efficient this way for me. Mm -hmm. And anybody else that would choose to use it. Yeah, one of the things that I noticed is that um, I don't think you've missed, you've ever missed a, one of our video to home appointments. Like your attendance rate is 100%. Yeah, like, no, I don't think I missed any. I yeah. might have been sick one time, but we, we rescheduled, uh, I think, the next day or something. Whereas at an appointment type thing, I met it weeks before I was able to get back in. Mm -hmm. That's true. This, uh, so the scheduling has been easier too because we can work more around yours and your son's schedules. Try to. My wife is able to make the appointments if she comes home in time, you know, she can talk to you mm -hmm. about stuff that, that uh, we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Whereas she drive to the other place and by the time she would drive there, I might have been out of my time with you. Right. To, so it makes it possible for her to attend too. And we even had one session with your son when he was home sick. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So, so from the convenience perspective and from um, attendance perspective, uh, does it save you any money? I mean, I guess the gas, the VA offers, um, they, they give me a, a, a mileage allowance, but by the time they deduct it, it's like $2. And I, I would go to the appointment just to see you because I like the, the sessions, but if you ever told me we can't do video at home anymore, I would still go to my appointments at the VA, but I would be apprehensive about doing so. I would be, become more of an annoyance than mm -hmm. a help. So it's kind of bad that they invented this because now mm -hmm. I don't want to go the other way. <laughs> I, I don't think that I would unless I really had to. Yeah. Well, the good thing is um, I wasn't really able to see you weekly at the clinic. At least this way we can do our weekly appointments, right? That's true. And I see you every week now before I would see you. I think I was seeing you once a month, and then I had an issue where I needed more frequent therapy, and it was every other week. But if now I go every week, right, which is which is really helpful. Yeah, and if there's ever an emergency, um, we can schedule it right then, and I could see you right then. Yep, and we've done that before. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot better when there is an emergency, and I call you up, and if I was on the phone, you would say, "Come into." Or wherever you would send me for a month or the, mm -hmm. the outpatient clinic and now you can say I have lunch or because you're nice you say I, I can call you at lunch and it, it's really helpful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wish that they would do this for other doctors. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, the, they're starting to offer it for some other doctor's appointments um, for people where it's follow-up, um, mm -hmm. you know, like trying to get in 
the psychiatrists so they can um, you know see you using this without you having to go all the way to the clinic for that um, they have uh, dermatology and nutrition appointments they're trying to add a lot of things using uh, video to home services so I won't be surprised if within the next five years you know it's uh, it's even more popular that completes the video thank you all very much